All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to a very exciting episode on the scientific adventures of Nucleus Neo. Hello, everyone, I'm Nucleus Neo, and let me start off by saying thank you for joining me on this adventure as we dive into the wonderful world of science. Now, tonight is going to be a very special episode. Well, as you see, I'm in a different location. Normally, I'm sitting in front of my periodic table with all of my gadgets and toys sitting in front of my desk. Tonight, we are in my bat cave, my man cave, having an interview with my friend, Steven. Say hello, Steven. Hey, everybody. Once again, tonight is going to be a very exciting episode. I'm going to be interviewing my friend, Steven, who is a dental student. And I have a series of questions that I'm going to ask him. And basically, what my goal is, is to encourage and inform all of you young students out there that are wanting to pursue certain careers in the medical field. Now. Uh, I'm kind of targeting all of my young students out there that are in med uh, middle school and high school, especially high school students transferring into uh, college. So for all those that are interested and want to be a dentist, I really don't want you to miss this episode because I have a lot of great questions that I'm going to ask Stephen, and he has a lot of good answers for a lot of them. This is my friend, and I hope you're ready. Let's get started. Okay, so first off, question number one, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm originally from Columbia, um, and I went to UCF, University of Central Florida in Orlando. And on my free times, I like to road bike, I like to play basketball and cook and try different recipes and just use that as my relaxing time while in dental school. Okay, so not only are you a, a dental student, but you're like a, a man of many different trades, you know, you like to cook and do all that. Oh, he's over there being shy. Go ahead, man. Okay. So that, that's why that's why I have so many nicknames for Steven when we were studying in school. Call him uh, Steve-O, Steve Reno, Stevenator, a whole bunch of other nicknames. But yeah, he's the man. So, you know, that, yeah, that, that's why I like Steven. That's why I mess with you, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Leo. Yeah. All right, so question number two. Now, what age were you when you realized that you wanted to be a dentist? So I think at the age that I realized when I wanted to be a dentist was around when I was in my junior, senior year of college. Um, so I wanna say about 17 years of age. And typically that's a good age because that's when you're in school and you probably already chose your major and that's when you're working on your prereqs um, for dental school as well, or whichever other uh, graduate program you are interested in at that time. All right, so Stephen, what dental school do you attend? So currently I'm a second year dental student at Creighton School of Dentistry in Omaha, Nebraska, and it's right in the center of the country. So you oh, okay. Okay, it's pretty cool. So now with dental school, how many years does it take to complete dental school? Well, dental school is just four years, and at the end of those four years, you graduate as a general dentist, and if you want to specialize in some different specialty in dentistry, that is an additional years to depending on what program you ended up going to. Okay, so you have now you have your first four years as undergrad, which is your freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year. Then when you're when you are accepted into dental school, it's four additional years. And then whatever you want to specialize in, it's additional schooling after that. Correct. Okay. So re really you don't have to specialize in uh into anything after the four years. You can just be a general dentist and and that's pretty much pretty much it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's usually the dentist that you uh, grow up seeing after you stop seeing your uh, pediatric dentist. So that'll be the one that you normally go to now if you have some sort of issue if you're above like 18 years of age. Okay. Okay. It's pretty cool. All right. So dental school is four years. And so what exactly, what, what year are you in and what does that actually mean? So currently I'm a D2, which is a second year dental student. And this is what we call the preclinical year. So this year, we kind of moved away from a lot of didactic and science courses that we saw first year of dental school, where we, have, we were spending more time in class learning about the anatomy of the body, you know, just up until the waist. And then we see head and neck anatomy a little bit more, and we start learning about physiology and biochemistry. So it's a lot more classwork in, in D1 year. And at the same time, we take just a couple lab courses where we're working with our faculty and kind of building our hand skills that we're going to use 
in D2 year, which as I mentioned before, is the preclinical year where we're learning science along with the science that we need to learn in lab. So we need to use those skills that we learned in our first year in the lab courses to know what angles we have to uh, restore to that and just build that language that we're going to use in the second year. Because the second year, as I mentioned, is the preclinical year where we're kind of learning uh, the different um, skills that we're going to put towards the third and fourth year when we're actually working with patients and with our faculty to help, you know, fix whatever the issue the patient had before, you know. Okay, okay. So I'm not really sure if you kind of just answered my my next question. While I was well, I was going to ask like, what are like the, the is the curriculum for the first a uh, first and second year? Um, but if you go if you want to go ahead and just run that, go ahead and you know let us know. So what is like the the first and second year curriculum? What does that look like um, when you're starting as you're starting med uh, dental school? Excuse me, dental school, and then you're transitioning to the second year. So the first year, as I mentioned, is just a lot more didactic courses. We're seeing a lot more science classes. We're spending more time learning about anatomy, physiology, histology, uh, biochemistry. And then that all kind of just disappears the second year. You know, we see a little bit more uh, classes that are geared toward, I, I want to say, like the different specialties like endodontics, periodontics, and and restorative dentistry, which is like the dentistry where um, we're fixing cavities in, in teeth. Okay, so that, that 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 sounds like a lot of fun. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, how how was dental school going for you? You know, right now, I mean, I, I, what, what is it? What, what is your experience? How how do you you know what is going on? How do you like it so far? I mean, I I love the challenge that dental school presents to to all of us. You know. It's it's a hundred hundred of us in our school and we're all going through it together and it's just uh, I just like the challenge where we always have to constantly be adapting to whatever the week gives to us because there's certain weeks where we have multiple exams and certain lab projects that we have to learn and manage our time and adjust to how much time to spend to study, how much time to spend to lab to get things done and, and turning them in because um, there's a lot of work specifically in, in the second year and, and, and you just have to be quick on your toes to adapt and, and learn how to distribute your time. Okay, so I, I, I know I'm probably jumping around with this question, but you did kind of, you know, uh, uh, piqued my curiosity when you you were talking about you know uh managing your time so you know what is one way like students can manage their time I mean, as they can actually get into the rhythm of managing their time in undergrad because i know that kind of transitions you know when you you know when you get into the next level of your schooling so what is like one way that students incoming freshmen can actually uh manage their time right so they can they are actually studying effectively while not you know killing themselves trying to you know get through the rigor of college and classes and life and stuff like that so you know what are like uh, i guess some time management uh, uh, you know things that you picked up with your study well i i think the where where you learn how to manage your time is seeing the results that you're getting or um if, if you're having a certain issue with a certain topic spend more time on that one, but then leave the easier topic for yourself last and, and spend less time on that. So you, you, can't, you kind of have to get a gauge on how you're doing and then tell yourself like, okay, I need to spend a little bit more time in biochemistry instead of head and neck anatomy because I feel like I can memorize that a little easier, but I need to spend more time, you know, learning the, the, the complexity of biochemistry. Mm, so uh, basically learning, putting all your effort into the difficult parts while saving the easy stuff for last. No, basically yeah, so we'll, the easy stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, whatever means... you can get done quicker because, you, you know, it just clicks better. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, that's what kind of helped, you know, with, with uh, biochem when we were at uh, <laughs> UCF, especially Orgo, hitting all the hard stuff and then saving the, <laughs> exactly. saving the easy stuff for last. That was uh, that was it was pretty helpful. It was pretty it was a pretty interesting time period. So, <laughs> so with yeah. dental school, what are some of the things that you enjoy, and what are some of the things that you find most challenging? So, you know, people are going to think I'm crazy, but I, one of the things I enjoy about dental school is looking at the week ahead and seeing the amount of things that we have to do. Some weeks we have two, two three exams, uh, two, three quizzes, a couple projects due. And then in the moment, you're just like, oh my God, how am I gonna get this done? But then that week comes, you study for everything, you do well, you turn all your projects in, you get the grades that you wanted back. And it's just such a rewarding feeling. So I, I love that we, you know, put all that time and effort in and then at the end of the day you just feel rewarded and and it kind of just fuels you up for the next week that follows it mm, uh, so it, it, it you get that uh that high when you're um uh accomplished accomplishing something so yeah that that it really does i i that that's that's a very interesting thing because that that is true especially when you're studying when you're when you finally understand a very difficult topic, especially in these science classes, whether it be even in math or whatever, whatever subject that you're studying, but even in these science classes, when you find, when, when those things finally connect, you're like, oh my gosh, this, this it, it, it gives you energy and gives you a, a much needed a, a power to move on, especially when you're seeing those, those test results, those A's, 90s, whatever, you know, everything like that. It's so yeah, I, I can... I, I I can I can see that that's not crazy at all, man. I, I like that. That's good. You know, it, it kind of gears you up towards the following next week. You know, can, you know, continuing doing your best, getting those grades, turning everything in. So that makes sense. That makes sense. So, why dentistry over over another profession? Why dentistry over you know uh, being a doctor or psychiatrist, anything like that? So why dentistry over any other profession? So throughout my time when I was an undergrad and just figuring out what exactly I wanted to do, um, I kind of decided to shadow, you know, the medical field first, like doctors. Um, and what I kind of noticed with my time when I was shadowing them is that there wasn't a lot of handwork involved with it. And a lot of the patients that came in to see the doctor, we never were able to change or improve anything that appointment. It was always, um, okay, what's wrong? Take this medication. If it doesn't improve, I want to see you back in two weeks. And then I was always like, but what happened? Like, I, I want to make, you know, sure that I did something for the patient that in that instant. Um, and then Eventually, I got around to shadowing a dentist and had the hand skills. And my favorite thing of all time was seeing an improvement by the end of that appointment. Mm, like a patient okay. came with a toothache. Yeah. We did what we had to do, and then they were good. And then they were like, oh, my God, man, like, how'd you do that? You know, so oh, I, I love that, you know, that I was able to make to, to see the patient improved by the end of the point able to, you not, know, see like a beginning and an end not like oh man i have a cavity and take this medication and come back and see if that cavity is exactly <laughs> no no that makes it you're you're, you're a hands-on uh, uh you know kind of guy and you know it it, it if, if that's you know what you like to do i mean it definitely fits so that makes it i like that i like that okay good all right so prior before getting accepted into dental school my as a undergrad student, what were some of the things that you did that helped better your chances uh, of, of getting accepted into dental school? You know, did you run any clubs or any research? And if you did uh, join any clubs and do research, what exactly, uh, what clubs did you do and what research uh, were you a part of that helped better your chances of getting accepted into dental school? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so one of my best tips for the undergrad community is to first kind of look at 
potential schools that you want to apply to all over the country. You, you have to have an open mind and just look all over the country and see what requirements they ask for in, in your application. So if you can uh, get into a pre-dental club at your school, join it. Um, if you can have a research opportunity with a professor in your college or university, you also highly suggested that you join it. Um, and also like, it, it's good to kind of work on your personal statement as well pretty early on so you can come up with whatever the best version of your personal statement is um, and, and just have a bunch of people read it and give you uh, some constructive criticism on it to, to just make it better. Because at the end of the day, you kind of want to have as much uh, research um, or club experience and, and kind of have a really nice personal statement to kind of increase your chances of getting into dental school. And, and, and of course, your academics play a big role in it too. But we're, we were just talking about, you know, clubs and research and personal statements. Um, you know, those little sections that are very important as well in your dental school application. Okay. So basically it's a, it's a student's whole package. So it's not so, not just solely the grades, the academic portion, but also, you know, uh, uh, whether it be, you know, organizations, clubs, they were, uh, that, that they're, that they should join in and research that they should get involved in. So really, you know, a student should kind of, branch out instead of you know focusing solely just on the academic portion which is the most important aspect of it exactly but you but, know other things kind of help make your you know your resume or your application stand out when you're doing other things but of course if your academics aren't as strong definitely focus on your club experience and join you know different clubs they love to see diversity and different activities that you've joined in or, um, you know, just different things that you've done. They, they like, you know, unique students that have, you know, just like you said, an all around package. Okay. So like the, the one thing that, that, um, that I kind of like to point out is that I kind of started my medical school <clears throat> uh, track very late in life, you know, and I kind of, you know, uh, uh, didn't understand that you know I had to join clubs and do research and everything like that. So I kind of got into the game extremely late. So now I'm just playing catch up, you know, along of course with you know making sure my grades on point, the MCAT's on point, but everything else after that. But should when should a student start looking into you know clubs and and, and following research? I mean, should they wait after their freshman year, after starting their sophomore year? Because I know like the first year is very important and a lot of students kind of find themselves sinking or swimming when yeah. they're trying to add so much on so what would be like a, a good time frame that a student should actually join a club and, and search for research you know search for research projects that they can get involved in should be like the, the freshman year sophomore year De definitely my best tip is to start as soon as possible and if you can stay with that club or organization, you know, a long amount of time, that's even better because in your dental school application, they kind of ask how long you've been in each club for and stuff. And um, so that's where I definitely say as long as, as soon as possible. Okay. Now, what has allowed or helped you to be successful in dental school? Uh, Definitely what I can say has helped increase my chances of success in dental school is just making as much friends as possible, surrounding yourself with just positive energy and also just managing your time and, and just working together as a team because uh, it's, it's more difficult to try to get through dental school on your own, you know, because it just becomes so much easier when you have a group of friends and you just all worked like a well-oiled machine together to get different tasks done. So if you're having some sort of issue with a project or uh, 
or a certain topic, you know, it's good to have that big group of friends to ask and say, hey, I'm having an issue with this project. Like it keeps breaking. Like, what should I do? And maybe he had that same issue too. And he told you that one little thing that helped you, you know, get it done finally and turn it in. So definitely having as much friends as possible and just managing your time as we talked earlier and, and just focusing your time on different things for sure. Okay. Yeah. So what Steven said is spot on because with that, so when I first started uh, uh, at UCF, keep in mind now I graduated from USF with a degree in political science. I've never taken a science class a, a day in my life prior before, you know, getting on this particular med medical school track or as a pre-med student. And a lot of these classes were really difficult. Well, for me at the time, like biology and chemistry and, and physics and orgo. And if it wasn't for students such as Steven, Rachel, uh, Taylor, and, and every other, uh, and everyone else that I study with, it would, it, it, my, my success in those classes would have been very difficult. So what Steven is saying is actually correct. When you can, is if, when you're starting your freshman year, as soon as you're getting to these science classes, make friends, switch numbers, study because those these these study groups will help you become a better student somebody's going to teach you how to study better how to write notes better how to look at things better i've asked steven so many questions i like yo uh do you remember what she said oh steven was like you know da, 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 da. i was like oh my goodness thank you and it helps so making friends early in your classes if if you can meet some friends at orientation, like, hey, what is your 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 uh, your uh, major? Your We're gonna be friends because when you when you're going to college and you're in orientation, they kind of section each major off into like uh, groups, so you're going to see the same students over and over again. So I I highly advise we highly advise to make friends early, so your success in these science classes is going to be is real, really smooth. That's all we can say. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty spot on though. So, well, that was a tip, you know, that I can give freshmen, but, but what other tips do you think you can give for incoming freshmen that are about to start college? I mean, I think, I think the best tip is just, just network because and build that skill because it's only gonna be more important and more valuable for you the older you get and the deeper you get into your you know your schooling track okay so now the final question for tonight now do you have any 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 advice any words of encouragement for you know to for any young men out there that are, you know, that are thinking of wanting to pursue dentistry? Uh, definitely, if you're considering the dental track or any track in particular, um, if, if, you know, you have that interest and you go to your dentist and see them regularly, ask them if you can shadow. Uh, you know, I'm sure that they are, glad to have you shadow and, and show you the field because a lot of us are very passionate about the dental field and we also want to inspire the future generation to join and and just get into this amazing field and they'll take you under your wing and, and I'll take you under my wing if uh, you ever reach out or anything if you have any questions um, and yeah we, we all would would love to take people under our wings. Yeah, see, that's that's very refreshing to hear because the one thing that was a little difficult for me was, um, I guess, searching for the opportunities to shadow doctors because, you know, um, one, I don't, don't really go to the, the, to the hospital very often. <laughs> I, I don't, I sure don't want to be at the hospital very often, but, you know, it was very difficult to, uh, to find doctors to shadow with. You know, and sometimes, you know, I get a little, um, uh, I can't say shy, but yeah, I will say shy when I, you know, me and the doctor, I'm like, you know, how do I, you know, walk up to him and ask him that and stuff like that. But definitely, you know, it's 
shoot your shot. What's the worst they can say? No, I mean, you can ask 10, 10 dentists. And one of them's going to say yes eventually. So this exactly. is same. So, yeah. And if you're ever having some issue uh, finding a local dentist or anything, if you ever join your uh, pre dental club in your undergrad or um, college or something, um, at least in, in UCF, they already had a dentist that you can shadow through the club because they already like networked with them and had this Excel sheet that you would sign up for and choose a day and they will allow you to go in there. So that's another reason why it's good to join a dental club as soon as possible because I'm not sure other clubs have that. I'm sure they do, but that's how it was in UCF and how I was able to gain some some shadowing hours and mm-hmm. if you do ask your your current dentist to shadow they might even say oh how about i let you shadow my other colleague who's uh endodontist and then you got another dentist there and then slowly you'll be noticing that you have your home network of dentists that you have gained for you to go and shadow and gain hours and basically that's where networking becomes very important so it goes back to what you uh said earlier start starting early exactly starting early and then you know you yeah that 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 doesn't make a lot of sense all right so ladies and gentlemen um uh, uh all of my young students out there that pretty much concludes tonight i want to say thank you to my wonderful friend steven for taking time out you know so i can interview him so i can you know basically share some knowledge with all of you wonderful young students out there so if you have uh, any questions for Steven, let me know. Then I can go ahead and plug you into Steven, and then he can answer all of your questions from there. Now, keep in mind that this, is, this isn't going to be the only interview that I'm, uh, that I'm going to do. There's going to be other students, other professionals that I want to have on the show that can encourage and provide information for all you young students out there. You know, I don't want you to start you know, late in life you know, saying that, no, this is what I want to do. How do I do it? Where do I begin? There's so much information out there that it can be overwhelming at times. And you just kind of just lose yourself in all this information. Um, So once again, Stephen, thank you very much. That's why I say you're the man, you know. (laughs) Thanks for having me on the show. Yes, yes, man. And also, I want to share what I wanted to uh, do as well. So hopefully if I can build up, you know, uh, a network, I, I kind of want to have like a, um, like a, uh, a group Zoom meeting, like either sure. four or five or six people. And basically what it is kind of like a, I can't say live, but kind of like a recorded thing where we're actually giving tips on how to survive through college, you know, because we've all been there and it's very difficult. Note taking strategies studying strategies just how to survive and how to make friends and how to be successful in college but you know that's you know something that i'm going to plan in the future and i want to let you know because you're a positive person and i know that you're going to be encouraging some of my students out there that are watching you know either some of my adults out there watching too they're going to tell their kids watch this guy steve and he's great so yes once again thank you ladies and gentlemen boys and girls enjoy the rest of your night Once again, stay happy, stay healthy, stay scientific, and I'll see you next time.